Hey guys, this is Adam. If you are working with BI and data, you probably are familiar with SQL query language. Today I'm going to show you how to use that query language to process and analyze streams of data. This is a quick introduction to Azure Stream Analytics. Stay tuned. As always, let's start with some key characteristics around stream analytics. First of all, you can analyze your stream of data using familiar SQL query language, which is very good because SQL is one of the leading languages when it comes to data analysis by data engineers. So it's very easy to find a skill set for people to start using stream analytics. And with many integrations out of the box connectors to Azure services, it's easy for you to start using it and implement it in already existing infrastructures. And in case SQL language is not enough for you, you can extend it by building your own custom functions. And to do that, you can use JavaScript, .NET, or machine learning services. Now we can actually start talking about how does it actually work. So let's start with some basics. First of all, the thing we will need to create when starting with Stream Analytics is source. And for the source, you will need to define the type of the source that you're integrating, fill in some common properties, and use alias that you will use in your queries later on, which for our example could be Azure Event Hub as our input type with an alias hub input. Once the input source is defined, you need to define an output. Again, you need to provide a type and an alias. In our case, this could be a Synapse database with an alias Synapse output. Once both the input and the output are defined, you can start defining your SQL job query. This query is the core of how Stream Analytics will process your data. It will define how to pick the data, what kind of transformation do you need to apply, and how to output it later on. And just like in standard SQL, you need to grab your data from the source by using from statement and providing alias of your input source. Second of all, you need to perform transformation by using familiar select statement. If you want everything, you can just pass the star. And lastly, you need to output the data somewhere by using into statement and again using the alias of your output. Once the query is defined, the only thing left for you to do is to start the job. Once the job is started, the data will start flying in and automatically will be copied into the output of your stream analytics job. In this case, using select star means we're copying entire input stream into our output. This example shows very nicely how easy it is to grab the data from Event Hub and stream it directly to Synapse Analytics. And just like with normal SQL, you can apply filtering. So imagine our input data on our Event Hub follows this schema. We have an ID, importance, and a user columns. You can create a WHERE statement and use that column inside of the SQL query. In this case, we're creating a condition so that only the data containing importance greater than one will be returned to our output. And as soon as the data will start coming in, it will get filtered on the fly into the output based on that condition. And for certain analysis, you will want to perform Windows-based operations. And to do that, you can use group by statement just like in normal SQL and provide a tumbling window function which will define a width of your window. In this case, it's gonna be every two seconds, calculate the maximum importance of the incoming data. Remember, since this is a group by, just like in normal SQL, you need to provide an aggregate function. When the data will start arriving, every two seconds it will be grouped and the result will be calculated. Note that in this case, it's always fixed interval of two seconds because this is how we defined our tumbling window. With that said, we can move to input and output. What are the supported services in Azure that you can use using Stream Analytics? When it comes to input, we have three supported services. It's Blob or Azure Data Lake, IoT Hub, and Event Hub. Stream Analytics also allows you to use reference inputs. In this case, it's Azure Blob Storage or NSQL database, allowing you to pull some reference data. An example of that kind of data could be some geographical data, some dictionary data from your application in order to combine it with your stream data and perform additional analysis. And there's a lot of services supported for the outputs. You can use blobs, data lakes, event hubs, service buses, and even Power BI. Streaming data to Power BI is one of the core use cases for Azure Stream Analytics. 
because creating live dashboarding is really easy using this service. Just apply the query over your stream and you will see live dashboards in Power BI in just a couple of minutes. This is part of the demo that I prepared for you today. It should also be noted that Stream Analytics allows you to use multiple inputs or multiple outputs within a single query. So you can combine the data or output the data into multiple outputs using a single job and a single query. It's up to you to design how you want to combine that data, how you want to analyze it, and which are the outputs that you want to support for your application. Today, our end-to-end -end demo scenario that I will perform will start with an IoT device. Please note that you don't have to have IoT device to perform this yourself because we're going to use a browser-based Raspberry Pi simulator. In this case, let's go to browser and open a new tab and navigate to website Azure Samples GitHub IO Raspberry Pi Web Simulator. And the simulator here is fairly easy to use. On the right hand side, you're going to find the code for that simulator. And the only thing you will need to do is to replace the connection string here and hit run to simulate the device. Now that we have simulator open, we can go back and the next thing we'll need to create is Azure IoT Hub. This is where we're going to be sending telemetry from our IoT device and we're going to use IoT Hub as an input for the stream analytics job. Let's go back to our browser and back to Azure portal. Select menu on the left hand side, select create a resource and type IoT Hub, press enter. You will find a template from Microsoft, click on it and hit create. The only thing you need to do is create a new resource group. In this case, I will use Azure Stream Analytics intro. I need to also select a region. For me, that will be North Europe and the name for my IoT Hub will be AM Demo IoT Hub. Review and create and create. When IoT Hub is created, select go to the resource. And in this case, I'm not going to spend too much time on the IoT Hub because it's not the topic of our demo today. So just find on the left hand side IoT Devices Blade, select it. And in here, you need to add a new device by selecting new on the top. Provide the device ID. In my case, this will be my IoT device. No other configuration is required here, so select Save. When the device is created, select Refresh on the top to find your newly created IoT device. When you do that, select it. And in here, the only thing you will require is to copy the primary connection string. So just select Copy and go back to your IoT simulator and replace the connection string here with the one you just copied. And once you do it, select run to verify everything is working correctly. As you see, messages are being sent to your IoT Hub from the Raspberry Pi simulator. Now that our demo setup is complete, we can go back to Azure portal and start creating other services to analyze the IoT stream that we just created. So our IoT Hub is already set up and we have stream of events coming from the device. Now we need to create a stream analytics job. Again, navigate back to portal, select menu on the left hand side, create a resource, type in stream. You should find stream analytics job, select create, give it a name. So process IoT data. Select the subscription, resource group, Azure Stream Analytics intro, select the location. In my case, it's North Europe. And in here, the most important choice is the streaming units. As you see here, by default, it's selected free. That means free servers will be processing my data at all times. This directly impacts the billing. So for the demo purposes, always select one because we just need one server to process our data. And remember, when you see the pricing for stream analytics, it's a simple calculation of how many streaming units have by the price of the streaming unit. Now select create. Creating stream analytics jobs is literally a couple of seconds because the job itself doesn't do anything yet. We can use go to the resource button to quickly navigate to our service. 
By default, after creation, the Stream Analytics jobs is not running. You have start and stop buttons on the top if you want to control that. But remember, it's not running yet, therefore you're not paying anything. On the left hand side, the most important things is the job topology. In this section, you have inputs blade, functions blade, query and the outputs. So once we created our job, we can start defining inputs and the outputs. But we are still missing an output. In this case, we're gonna use Azure Blob Storage to stream the data into Blob Storage. And to do that, let's navigate back to Portal, go to Create a Resource from our left-hand side menu, select Storage Account on the bottom, choose the resource group, in this case Azure Stream Analytics Intro, type a name, for me that's gonna be Azure Demo Storage for IoT, Ensure that the proper location is set, in our case North Europe, and everything else will be default. So just hit Create and Review and Create. Once the storage account is created, go to the storage, select Containers, and create Output Container, where we're gonna be outputting our stream data. Select Create, and there's nothing else that we need to do right now. So let's go back to our presentation, since we have our input and our output, the thing we need to do right now is to define this as input and output in the Stream Analytics job and create a query. Now navigate back to Azure Portal and let's open Stream Analytics job. Select the resource and Stream Analytics job that you created previously. And now open Inputs Blade. In this blade, you need to select and press on Add Stream Input. Choose the type of the input, which in our case is IoT Hub. Here you need to provide alias. Again, as I said, this will be our IoT input. A panel here allows you to choose from Azure subscription. And as you see, it already detected that I have AM Demo IoT Hub created, allows me to select messaging endpoint, and it gives me a control over all the other default properties like the consumer groups, partition keys, format of the files. But for now, we're just gonna leave everything here as default. Once this is done, select Save. With just a couple of clicks, you are able to add new input into your Stream Analytics job. After doing that, after saving it, it will add it and also test connectivity for you to ensure that everything was set up properly. And as you see, we are able to achieve successful connection test. Next, you need to add an output, navigate to Outputs Blade, select Add. It is very apparent that you have many more options for the outputs here. In this example, we're gonna use Azure Blob Storage to output our stream data. Select it, provide alias again, that will be Blob Output. We can select from our Azure subscription. A container of output that I created a moment ago was also detected. We can use a pattern if we want, which is very cool because you can just type date and it will use the date format here for the folder structure, which is very good because there's gonna be a lot of a lot of files for streaming scenarios. And you can change from JSON to Avro or CSV. For now, leave everything else as default. Hit save. And now new output will be added and a connectivity test will be performed after adding this. Connection test succeeded, that means we can go back into the query section. When you open a query blade, you will see a small editor that allows you to run, type and test your queries. In here, you can do everything you want when it comes to development. Of course, everything besides creating custom functions, but when it comes to creating queries, you can do everything here. By default, there's not much here. There's a standard SQL statement using input and output aliases, which can be found on the left hand side with a small icon indicating that this input is currently used within query. So we're using our IoT input as the job input. Notice that our alias also disappeared from the list of the inputs on the left hand side. And we're grabbing all the data into our blob output. And once this is done, you can simply save the query and test it. Before we do that, notice that on the bottom, whenever you're selecting the inputs, on the bottom you can actually review what is the sample data for this dataset. 
My recommendation here is always hit this refresh button here to get most up-to-date sample of your incoming data. And in just few seconds, live data will be pulled from your IoT hub and you will be able to see results. Now go to the test results tab. In here, when you save the query and test the query, you can run it and see what are the results from your query. In this example, because we use select star, we're grabbing all the data and streaming this into our blob. Now, the only thing we need to do right now is go to overview blade and hit start on the job and hit start. After about one or two minutes, a job will be started, the status will be running and you can start reviewing your results. The first thing, always verify that your simulator is still running and sending the messages. In our case, as we see, it's still running. That means we can go back to Azure, select our resource group, navigate to Azure storage account, to our containers, select an output container. And in here, you can see the year, month and current day. When you open this, you will find a CSV. As you see already, our CSV has some data in it. And if you would just keep refreshing, notice that you see the size grow every couple of seconds because our stream is currently running streaming data into this blob. If you open that CSV, hit on edit tab, as you see, this is our streaming data. We have 113 rows, but if we refresh again, we will have 115 because this is a streaming scenario and data will be coming continuously into this CSV. If we go back to our example, what else we can perform here right now is I will show you how to use the same query to output data into Power BI, in which case we need to add a new output for Power BI. And then we will need to define a new query which will grab average over time window and stream that data to Power BI. So let's go back to Azure portal, to our resource group, open stream analytics job. Before doing that, my advice is always open a new tab and open Power BI to ensure that you have the license and that you have access in the portal and that you have already opened a session. When you do that, go back to your tab, open outputs blade, add a new output, but please note you cannot add or change outputs because the job is currently running. So what you need to do is go back to overview and stop the job. The job will be stopping for about a minute or two. Once the job is stopped successfully, go back to outputs blade and now you can add a new output. Select Power BI and the first thing you need to do is authorize. And this is why I said you should be logged in into separate tab because if you are, then you will not get any unexpected issues here. As always, first thing we need to provide is an alias. This will be Power BI output for me. We can leave my workspace as a default one. We need to provide a data set name. So this is where our data will be stored. In my case, it's IoT data and a table name. In this case, I'm gonna name this table temperature. This is the name of the table that will be created within Power BI that you can use for reporting. Hit save and Azure will do the same stuff. Add the connection and test the connectivity for you. So you don't have to worry about the details. Since our output is defined, we can go back to query blade and prepare new query. Important to note here is that you are allowed to use multiple queries and those multiple queries can use multiple inputs and multiple outputs. On the left hand side, you can already find your Power BI output but you will notice that it doesn't have an icon because it's not currently used by the job. Now simply create new query. Type select, don't use a snippet, press escape, and do an average of temperature as a new column called temperature, and then type from. In this case, we are using our IoT input again. We also need to output that data somewhere by using into in this case, it will be our Power BI output. Once this is done, the next thing we need to do is to create a group by, because this is a window-based function using average, so we need to have a group by. So at the end, add a group by statement and create a group by by a tumbling window. 
So you use a tumbling window function and other parameters. In this case, it's a duration, which is in seconds. And that duration is two. So every two seconds, please calculate the average temperature from IoT input. The very last thing that I like to do is I like to have the temperature, but I also like to save what was the time that this event was generated. In which case, I will add a system timestamp, which is get me the current date as a window end, which will give me a column indicating what is the time that this event was generated. You can test a query if you want by selecting this query and pressing test selected query on the top. In just a few seconds, you can review results of your new query. See, we were able to calculate average temperature and pass the date. Now save the query, go to overview and start the job. You can start from the last stopped or start it from analyzing from this point onward. So let's do that and hit start. After again two minutes, our current job is running. At this point, we can review our results. To do that, go to Power BI, navigate to My Workspace, and in the Datasets tab, you should find your IoT data streaming set here. So what you want to do right now is create new dashboard. Hit Create on the right-hand side, select Dashboard, give it a name, I'm gonna call it Demo, hit Create, and inside of this dashboard, you want to press Add a Tile on the top, and add streaming data set. Here you need to select your IoT data set and select a card. For the fields, I'm going to use a temperature field to display live data. As you see, it's already changing live because we are currently streaming data here. If we want, we can add another tile. Again, select streaming data set, our IoT hub, and this time change from card to line chart. In line chart, we have this window end that I added, a date, and use as a values our temperature column, and hit next, and apply. Once this is done, you can already see live dashboarding performed from our IoT device using stream analytics to analyze and output average data for this IoT device over the period of two seconds. It's pretty easy to achieve that with just basic knowledge of SQL and a few clicks in Azure portal. We can now go back to our presentation and talk about additional features that you get by using Stream Analytics. For instance, you get a lot of additional built-in functions. You have functions for anomaly detection, you have window functions, geospatial functions, etc. etc. Most of the most basic things in SQL work. Similar for joins, so you can join multiple data together and get some even more complex results. Additionally, if you want, there's a local development support from within Visual Studio and Visual Studio Code. They allow you to create those user-defined functions, which is our another topic. User-defined functions allows you to extend this SQL by a custom functions written in JavaScript, .NET, or Machine Learning Studio or Machine Learning Service. And lastly, there's also support for user-defined aggregates, but this is only with JavaScript. Using Azure Stream Analytics is fairly easy. You just need a couple of clicks and you're integrating with multiple Azure services, using familiar query language to process and analyze streams of data. Now it's up to you to decide whenever this is the right service for your application. For today, that's it. Hit a thumbs up, leave a comment and subscribe if you want to see more and see you next time.